I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We continue in Esther now. We're going to be in chapter 3. At this point, Esther has now been made queen. Now, Vashti was deposed as queen in the third year of Ahasuerus. In the fourth year, the decree goes out to gather the virgins so that the king can choose a new bride, a new queen. And in the seventh year is when Esther finally goes in to the king. So this has been a plan in the works for three years before Esther becomes queen. It takes three years from the time they send out the decree until Esther is made queen. Shortly after her coronation feast, Mordecai uncovers a plot to kill the king. We're all good. That's where we left off. We're now in chapter 3. Mordecai the Jew refuses to do obeisance to Haman. Haman arranges a decree to kill all the Jews in the kingdom. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants which were in the king's gate said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath, and he, and he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had shewed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were thought throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. You've got to be a very narcissistic and just very evil man to want to kill an entire people because of the actions of one man. One man does something you don't like, and so now you want to wipe out all of his people. That, This, in my opinion, is near Hitler-level evil. Haman is just an evil guy. Now, he calls him Haman the Agagite. Most people trace this back to the story of Samuel and King Saul, when Saul was commanded to destroy the Amalekites. The king of the Amalekites was Agag. And so it is believed, the theory goes, that Agag's wife, the queen, escaped and was pregnant at the time, and thus Haman is a descendant of that king Agag of the Amalekites. That's why he's called an Agagite. I'm not sure if this is really accurate. According to the Recording in Samuel, the Amalekites were completely destroyed. The only one left alive was the king, who Samuel would later kill. So, whether he had any surviving descendants, I don't think he really did. And so, I don't know what they, what is meant by being an Agagite, but I don't think it's in reference to being a descendant of King Agag of the Amalekites. I could be wrong, but in my opinion, it doesn't fit with what we know from Scripture. Verse 7. In the first month, that is, in the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast pure, that is, the lot, before Haman from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business, to bring it unto the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand, and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jews' enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants, and to the governors that were over every province, and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, in the name of the king Ahasuerus was it written, and sealed with the king's ring. 
And the letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, that they should be ready against that day. The posts went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan, the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was perplexed. They cast pure, or the lot, day by day, month by month. In other words, they were, trying, they were determining when they were going to kill the Jews, by lot, you know. Take 12 pieces of paper, toss it in a hat, one for each month. Shake it up, pull one out, that's the month. Okay, now we got 30 days in the month. Let's take it, numbers 1 through 30, stick it in a hat, shake it up, pull it out. That's the day. So on the 13th day of the 12th month, in other words, 11 months to the day from the decree being written is when this is going to happen. Now, they needed time to get the decree sent out. It would have taken a couple months, probably, to get to all of the provinces. Now, you'll also note the king has a lot of trust in Haman. Haman is probably a very... Haman probably was a good advisor to the king. He probably did a lot of good for the kingdom. But his personal anger, his personal animosity is driving him to acts of evil. Now you'll note that again, they wrote the command in every language of the kingdom. So that everybody has this. And the king, he sits down with Haman. They're having a good feast together. But it says Shushan, the city, was perplexed because the decree has been sent out. It doesn't say the Jews were perplexed. It says the city was perplexed. There was a large population of Jews here, and most of them were well integrated into society. They had friends here. And now you have this decree saying that all the Jews are going to be killed. It wasn't just the Jews that didn't like this decree. It was everybody. The whole city did not like what was going on. But we leave that here, and we will pick it up in the next chapter. So I will see you there.